Creating Templates. In this exercise, we will use already existing styles, modify them, and create a file template for our future uses. Open the 03.01 Styles Templates DWG file in the Lesson 3 Practice folder. Let's start editing the file and establish some standards for object styles, units of measurement, labels, and the like. The creation and maintenance of template files is a never-ending process. It's just a fact of life that we are always striving for a higher standard. Besides, projects and regulatory agency requirements are always evolving. Our template needs to adapt accordingly. First, make sure the tool space is active and visible. Now switch over to the Drawing Settings tab. Right-click on the file name, then Edit File Settings. Most standards, settings and styles are created here. On this tab, we can create, copy, modify, or delete styles. Under the Units and Zone tab, you can define parameters such as linear and angular units, annotation scale, and the coordinate system. Let's set the coordinate system for this project. We will see why this may be helpful on the next tab. This site is in the Universal Transverse Mercator UTM Projection System, Zone 10. Therefore, we choose the CSRS.UTM-10N system. We recommend that users consult their local Geographic Information System Authority for a recommended coordinate system for each project. Next, we need to set up the drawing to match the appropriate units and zone. This Transformation tab gives us an option to transform the coordinate system specified on the previous tab to a grid system. For example, if we have a survey data that was collected using an arbitrary local system, we can transform that data into a known grid system. To do that, we must have at least two known reference points for translation and rotation. Before any transformation, a coordinate system must also be set on the Units and Zone tab, which we already did by setting the projection to UTM North America Zone 10. To make a coordinate transformation, first, Activate Apply the Transform Settings checkbox. Then pick a reference point in the drawing. Usually this would be a point with known and georeferenced coordinates. In this case, our survey is already georeferenced. So we are picking a random location, just to explain the process. After that, type in the known coordinates of the point you selected in the drawing in the previous step. This will complete the translation phase of the transformation. Next, we need to perform the rotation phase. For that, activate the Rotation option as shown on the Transformation tab. Then, pick the second known point in the drawing. Again, click on a random point to choose the second georeferenced point. Finally, type in the known coordinates. Alternatively, you can use a rotation angle if you know one. On the Object Layer tab, we can specify default layers for various objects. When we create an object, a civil 3D point for instance, it will automatically be placed on the layer specified here. The Abbreviations tab allows you to manage different default abbreviations when creating labels and reports. The Ambient Settings tab specifies the current file's units and parameters. You can change the units to meters or feet, square meters or square feet, cubic meters or cubic feet, and so on by clicking on the plus sign and opening the sections for distances, coordinates, elevation, area, volume, and station. Now that some parameters have been created, save the file in a DWT format by proceeding as follows. Choose the Lesson 3 Working Folder, that is the Templates Tutorial Folder. Choose a DWT file format and click on Save. Then, enter the description of the template. This part is optional. But, as we will recommend throughout this course, always try to provide self-explanatory descriptions. Click on OK to create the template. Now, every time that we are starting a project, we can open this template file and rename it. As an option, we can also define this file as a template. It would be loaded whenever we create a new drawing, using the QNew command.